I would like to welcome you guys to the brand new TCG Player Infinite. When you sign up, you get 3% store credit back on all orders, as well as fast and free shipping for only $6.99 a month. So it's pretty much like Amazon Prime, but for Magic Cards. So if you're somebody who likes to buy Magic Cards on a regular basis, this is definitely the service for you. You can sign up in the link down below, or go to infinite.tcgplayer.com, and don't forget to use the code MarinMTG when you sign up. We are promoting this for the month of November. It is currently November 1st. Our goal is to get 100 people to sign up. We are currently at zero. Let's make this happen, boys. Hey guys, before we get into the video, I wanted to go ahead and point out the obvious that the Pioneer format is really taken off. So what we're gonna try to do for a little bit is on Mondays, we're gonna have modern gameplay videos as the classic modern Monday you all know and love. And then we're gonna do Pioneer videos on Wednesday and Friday, at least for a bit. We're gonna try that out and see how it does. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. Torbrand Thane of Redfell has already been seeing play in Pyro Prison decks as well as something known as Punisher decks. But we're going to do our own take on it today and it is going to be an 8 Rabble list. So we're going to use Rabble Master effects as well as Legion War Boss effects to try to go wide enough for Torbrand to push through immense amounts of damage. That is the goal for today, so let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. If you wanted to pick up today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you'd like to join the marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon exclusive Discord server where we discuss deck ideas for future videos. I'm actually super excited for today's deck because it's playing some spicy old cards that I think are very underrated and conveniently they work very well alongside Torbrand. So let's take a closer look. Goblin Rabble Master is the name of the game for this deck. We're trying to get out Goblin Rabble Master and his newer, younger brother, Legion War Boss, because they do technically the same thing that we want for this deck is to generate tokens on our combat step to go super wide. But we have a third one of the bunch, the one that never sees play. Hanwer Garrison is a card that I think is very underrated. It's a three mana, two, three, so it's kind of got like similar stats to Rabbles. Um, but then when it attacks, you put out two 1-1 one, one red human creature tokens tapped and attacking. Now, I, I think that that is a pretty good ability, putting out two of them and they don't go away at the end step. They sit there. They're actual legitimate tokens. And with all these three guys generating a whole huge board set of tokens, Torbrand might be able to go wild. So speaking of Torbrand, he makes uh, sources, red sources that deal combat damage or deal damage to a player, uh, deal two more damage two additional damage on top of that so with all of those tokens coming at the opponent they're going to be taking a bundle but this is a torbrand hell rider deck as i call it because this card is insane four mana for a three three haste whenever a creature you control attacks he deals one damage to the defending player so obviously with our rabbles war bosses and handware garrison with this combination of torbrand hell rider they're going to be taking a lot of damage this is basically going to be a one shot kill when we go torbrand into this so that is pretty nice. Now, obviously, all of our spells are at the three mana slot and greater. So we do have some rituals like Simeon Spirit Guide, Desperate Ritual, and Pyretic Ritual because we want to be able to get them out possibly on turn one, um, but guaranteed on turn two. So we have a little bit of help there because if we're just dropping our stuff on a uh, regular curve, it's going to be a little bit too slow for modern. So we got these things to help it out a little bit. And then finally, we do have a little bit of removal in Bolt and the brand new Bone Crusher Giant as well. I think that this card is going to fit well in here. It has that stomp ability, so even on the second turn, if we don't do anything, we can still kill one of our opponent's creatures or do something at least. And then also, he's another threat. The, the three mana, four, three. Whenever you target it, you take two. But if Torbrand is sitting out there, you're going to take four damage to even try to kill Bone Crusher. So it's like he hit you with one combat step anyways. So... He's just gonna push through a bunch of damage and also be pretty good tech. We got a total of 22 lands, a little bit of canopy lands and tech here and there, gemstone caverns just in case we're on the draw, castle embereth as well, Ramanab ruins for some extra damage at the top end. And then onto the sideboard, we have a whole bunch of three ofs for some very specific things. We got three copies of Searing Blood against uh, any deck that has mana dorks or little creatures, any aggro deck, taxes decks, whatever it may be. 
um, to be able to kill a creature and still deal three damage to them. So that uh, that helps our aggro plan. And then three copies of Magus of the Moon against Tron and or three color or more control decks. And then we got three copies of Dragon's Claw to gain a bit of life against Burn. They also trigger off our own spells as well. And then three copies of Smash to Smithereens against literally any deck that plays artifacts or like Ink Moth Nexus, for example, to be able to kill artifacts while also still dealing damage to them. And then three copies of Leyline of Combustion to bring in against any deck that's interactive. They're gonna take a bunch of damage whenever they target our stuff. And I used to think this card sucked, but after facing it, I've gained a lot of respect for it. It throws down the damage like crazy. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game here against Ananda with the Reaper King Avatar, and we're gonna be in the draw with some 14 Rabble Torbran, and do I keep this hand? If I draw land, I can turn to, yeah, I'm gonna keep it, this is a high upside. I turn to a Krenko, or a Rabble, and then a Krenko, and then, okay, I can also stomp that if, if I draw lands, and I didn't draw land, all right. So I thought that was like your eight rack list. So a rack in Pioneer is possible, dude. You got Davriel Kane, Shrieking Affliction. Isn't there like a, what is that card that, I thought it was Delirium's Gains. The one that makes each player discard three cards for two mana. Rhythm of the Wild, interesting. Uh... All right, let's, uh stomp this because I don't want them having five mana with Rhythm of the Wild out. One's left Heath. Is it time for a Magus of the Moon? That's fine. Alright, let's uh... Ritual into Rabble. I guess. I guess I should have Bone Crushered because that Magus. I guess I'm gonna have to trade with that Magus because I'm gonna play another Rabble next turn, and I guess I'm gonna trade with that Magus. You got a Blood Braid. They have a Colonian Hydra. Okay, I'm dead. I'm dead. Not beating that. I'm not beating that. That's literally gonna like bop us for how much? Eight plus six is fourteen trample this turn. 14 and then I just die and then next turn. All right, so in this match, I don't want anything, I don't think. I'm just gonna run it right back. All right, that was a thing. So watch out for Rhythm of the Wild. So it's just a riot deck, green, red, riot. That's cool. See, this is what I like to see in modern. I don't like to see spikes, I like to see that. All right, that's good. Let's keep that. We can bolt a turn one. Um, Arbor Elf, and then get out of turn two Rabble. Needs more bridge. Oh yeah, you're right, dude. I should have Ensnaring Bridge in this deck. All right, Mountain Go. Lanamur, Arbor Elf, thank you. Exile SSG, Rabble time. In there for one, down to 19. See if they have bolts in their deck or not. If they have it, they'll have to use it here. Looks like they're not. All right. Go swinging. They gotta bolt or a braid here. Like, they just gotta. It'd be weird if they didn't. They really don't have anything? Okay, now I'm gonna come in with this hand where Garrison. If they anger, I'm gonna be sad, but I'm not about to just stay back and do nothing. I'm pretty sure they got an anger though. They didn't even fetch. Mainly green. Cruel Spellbreaker, that's fine. We're pushing through that. Uh, Yeah, let's just swing all out. I don't see why not. Uh, 
Uh, attack with the everything. We'll trade off our rabble for that thing, I guess. Because I can bolt them at end of turn, and then Ramen up ruins them. That's five extra damage. And we're getting in for a lot here. It is a lot. We'll trade for the rabble. Yep, trading for the rabble. So bolt plus Ramen up ruins is just lethal here, so let's do it. That's your current paper chainer. Is it commander? Is it dementia master or all right we got there? It's uh does look like dementia. Alright. I'm gonna run it right back. This is a quick match. All your fetches are going in Gitrog. <laughs> Bummer. I mean all my fetches are in my uh Akiri Thrasios. But I'm building Timna Krom, so I would need a lot more fetches, but I sold a few of my fetches. I think I'm down to two Misties left, maybe three. But I have been playing a lot of modern, so I've been selling some things. I did still keep my modern green white stuff, but a lot of my stuff is gone. I also had to sell a lot of my stuff a little while ago to pay bills. Alright, so we have the Turn one bull for their Arbor Elf, and then turn two Hanward Garrison. So I'm gonna keep it. And go all in on this Hanward Garrison. Don't, Utopia's Pearl. Okay, that's fine. Bolting the turn one Arbor Elf really throws them off, because that takes them off of a lot of their turn two plays, like Gruel Spellbreaker and um, Rhythm of the Wild. And they have another elf, that's unfortunate. Ooh, a rabble. And a 17. I'll basically run rabble into anything right now. You're making six decks. You got six dual lands? The most I've ever had was two, but I had to sell them to pay bills. I had two savannas, but it was for my legacy uh, green white maverick deck. Um, but I had to sell out a legacy to support the YouTube channel. That was a year ago though. Now we're making it. We're, we're doing good now, but a year ago, it was when we were struggling. But we're good. We made it. We're alive. All right, I'm not going to pay attention to Kiora. It's too fat to pay attention to. And I, I'm not, I don't mean to fat shame. This is literally just magic talk. Hello. But yeah, Kiora is too fat to pay attention to. So let's just uh, swing at their face for six. Drop a Hanward Garrison, follow up the Rider, and then we'll be good. So you got a Scrubland, a uh, Underground Sea, a Volcanic Island, a Bayou, and a Plateau. Those are some good ones. <laughs> Dark Tavar, thanks for the follow, and oh that scene, oh that scene. Thank you for the tier one sub. Welcome to the Marination, and your moons, your nuts, your carns, your ducks, and your spikes. Good to have you. Can we get some duckies in the chat for oh that scene, or that Sean? Oh that Sean, I'm saying it wrong. Oh that Sean, thank you. Okay, so they got a creature power four or greater, so they drew a card. What's your follow-up? Another Arbor Elf? That's fine. That is fine. Go Rider number one. Now let's just swing all at them. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that, that message was under review? All right, attack all of them. Rider triggers, Hanwer Garrison triggers. Give me some more boys. Give me all the boys. Rabble's huge. They're at five. Getting two more dudes tapped and attacking. At them and at them. All right, opponent, what you got? Can you survive? I don't think they can. These are two biggest guys, and then they, yeah, they take way over lethal. They're negative two here. 
sure. All right, we bopped Green Red, Rhythm of the Wild, but that was an awesome deck from the opponent. That's what I like to see. Stuff like that. Like, I love that Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. We played it in Green White Angels and it worked out super well. Glad to see more people playing it and glad to see somebody making use of Rhythm of the Wild and um, Gruel Spellbreaker and Colonian Hydra, cards that deserve to see some play. So, shout outs to them. Got a game here against Auto Addict. Oh, wait, wait. It's not Auto Addict, it's Auto Didact. I don't even know what that means. We're going to be on the draw with some Torbran Rider 14 Rabble. And that's a turn 2 Rabble, so I guess I'm going to keep it. Because that's turn 2 Rabble and also turn 3 Rabble. Got double Rituals. And of course, what do we expect? Of course it's Burn. This is going to be difficult until sideboard. We have quite the painful mana base here as well. Now, if I can get one more Ritual off the top, I can go double Rabble here on turn two. Because I go Ritual, 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 and if I can get one more, just one more Ritual effect, a Simeon Spirit Guide perhaps, I can go triple or double Rabble. Okay, I get a free land. Not bad. Okay, that actually really hurts. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not about to beat that. I would have to ritual and then something and take four. I would go to 12. Yeah, I don't think I want to reveal any information. They saw ritual and ramen up ruins. Maybe they can expect it to be toy brand, but I think that I have no chance after that Eidolon. Goblin Guide into Eidolon is the best open that the burn deck can get and they got it. And I don't think I can beat that. Uh-oh. OBS disconnected. OBS disconnected. Gotta do a little bit of sideboarding real quick. All right, there we go. I'm gonna take all the time we need to to get this back online. Okay, it's back. Yo, press press one if we're black. Oh, if we're back. If we're black, press one if we're black. I was wondering if we're back. If everybody, if, if we're good, if you can see the stream, let me know. We're back, we're good. All right. All right, we're cutting back in here. Had a little bit of technical difficulties. We are back from sideboard and we got Dragon's Claw and Searing Blood now. I'm cutting a little bit of top end and, and one ritual. And I think we'll call it like that. And uh, this should really help. Do I play first? Yes. There's a Dragon's Claw, so I'm gonna slam keep this. I would like to get out a turn two war boss, and then if I whiff my land, I'll play a Dragon's Claw. But I like to get out as many war bosses as possible. The only problem is that I don't know if the opponent's gonna like have Searing Blood and Searing Blaze and just blow up all my war bosses. It was a bad time. All right, I think that I want to actually just slam Dragon's Claw. I'm going to slam Dragon's Claw. I want to maximize its effectiveness here. A blow, Caro Caro. We're back. Good. Well, of course I want to say yes to Dragon's Claw. That's the reason I brought the card in is to gain life. And now you're going to ask me, do I want to gain a life? It's so weird. Ooh, Searing Blood. Alright, I'm just gonna pass in Searing Blood the Eidolon. See if they got any potential follow-ups. 
If they Boros Charm to give their Eidolon indestructible, that's okay. I'll just bolt it on my turn. Alright, Searing Blood there. See if they want to give it indestructible. I want to say always yes to this, always yield. And a Dome Boros Charm. Okay, got rid of it. And they're going to take three. They're going to bolt us. That's fine. We're stabilizing pretty good. After all of that, we end up at 14, which is not bad. Spending a Rift Bolt. And now, do I get to go double war, um, double war boss here? I actually think I'm one short. All right, then I'll just slam a war boss then. And if they want to bolt the war boss, that's fine. It's a bolt that's not going to my face. They have two rift bolts on suspense, so definitely one of those has got to be going at my war boss. So one of those at me. So we'll take a total of two from that. And this other one is going at. Gotta be going at my war boss. It is going at my war boss. Okay. That's fine. Lava spike. Man, they're going in on these prowess triggers. Super in. I could have bolted. Like, I could have ritual plus bolted and saved myself five damage. They didn't even swing. So I guess that makes sense. Alright, so bolt that Swiss spear so it stops swinging at us. Yeah, they're scooping it up now. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's go on to sideboarding and probably run it back. Leyline of Combustion is not terrible, actually. Because they target us all the time. They're just going to keep taking two. And if they get an Eidolon out, they might kill themselves. That's not the worst idea I've ever had. Okay, I've never, like, played this card before or, like, a deck like this before. So if anybody knows if you're supposed to bring in Leyline against Burn, let me know. Because I'm not sure if I should. It doesn't sound like the worst idea. Maybe I want to try that. Maybe I don't need things like Canwar Garrison. And, like, I can probably cut a Ritual or, like, a Rider. Let's do it. I'm doing it. Let's try that. Okay, we have the turn one combustion and a turn one war boss, so I'm gonna keep that. Alright, let's start with the ley line and start with the gemstone caverns. Gemstone caverns is gonna exile Fiery Islet. All right, this doesn't seem bad. Doesn't seem bad. But now they're probably gonna have all the Searing Bloods and Searing Blazes. So they don't have a turn one dude, that's also pretty good. I'm expecting a Rift Bolt. And they also are taking pain off of their thing. Oh, so close to having a second Ley Line. That would have been amazing. All right, well, I'm not holding back. If you got, if you want to rift bolt this, that's fine. I'm not holding back at all. At least I get a goblin out of the deal. They're gonna have removal spells regardless. Might as well just go for it. Double ley line would literally just kill them. Double ley line would be game over. So if I can get this thing out next turn, like if I draw a ritual effect, that'd be great. Because whenever they target us with a 3 damage spell, they're going to take 4. So that would be nuts. Turn 1, we could have bolted the Swiss here. Probably. I probably missed that. Searing Blizzard, as expected. They're down to 12 already, man. They're down to 12. Oh, and I'll be able to get this Ley Line out next turn and just whenever they target us with the Bolt, they're going to take 4 damage. Oh, that's so good. 
That's so good. All right, let's hope they don't use all one mana burn spells here because I want them to wait until we get out another ley line. Oh, that Eidolon is so fine. That is definitely fine. They're going to take so much damage. They're taking an absolute butt ton of damage here. This is amazing. All right. See, I've gained a respect for Leyline and Combustion after going up against it because of realizing how painful it is. And the opponent's about to learn the power of the Leyline. Now, whenever they target us with the Bolt, they're going to take six. <laughs> they're going to take six whenever they try to target us. All right, let's rabble. Take two. Get in there. Down to nine. Come on, bolt me, bro. <laughs> they realize it's over. Man, that is so good. That is so good. Got a game here against Lorington. This guy probably loves his lore. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some 14 Rabble uh, Torbran. And that is turn one nothing. If I draw land, I get out of turn two Rabble. I would have to draw two lands. I think this is too sketchy. I think I'm going to have to mull this one. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let's keep that and probably bottom one of the rituals. Maybe not. Part of me wants to keep the ritual because I can go land, land, ritual, Cranko, and then if I draw another land, I can go land, ritual, rider. Yeah, that makes more sense. So bottom Ramanap ruins. I guess there was no reason to bottom Ramanap ruins. Should have bottomed the mountain. So let's pass a turn. All right, Lorington, what you want? I like that shamble shark. Okay, so it's Storm. We can definitely out aggro Storm if we do draw land. I need to draw land though. And we did draw the land. All right, this is exactly what we want. And got out Krenko. Team man's shocked. Is it time for a brawl or something? Or I hope it's an Electromancer. Because Electromancer doesn't block Krenko. Brawl does. Geth misses so much for your taste rather than Gomti if it was steel. Yeah, but Gomti's a one-time use. Geth just starts reanimating everything from your opponent's graveyard. The most nuts thing I've ever done with Geth is I... Um, reanimated somebody's Seedborn Muse and just started activating Geth on everybody's turn and I was just getting everything out of people's graveyards and like it was even like this dude was gonna cast a spell that was gonna stop me so I reanimated that dude's Frilled Mystic countered and then this dude was gonna top deck a Wrath so I draw step reanimated this guy's Brain Maggot to take whatever it was crazy All right, Ryder, and it was the Electromancer. So if they can definitely go off and win here, so I'm hoping they don't. Um, but Storm is definitely a deck that just straight up wins after it plays a turn two Electromancer or um, whatever. So they can win here if they got it. They got the thing. If not, then I have lethal. Slide of hand, okay, that's not it. What they needed to do was ritual into gifts and then go off, but they didn't do that. So we have another turn to try to win here. And if I draw land or ritual, a second rider is a thousand percent lethal. Passes the turn and okay, it's just another rider. All right, so I am just shy of it. So I think I'm just, well, I'm not gonna have another turn anyways. So I'm just gonna crack this and see if I find a bolt and I don't. All right, so let's go swinging. Get a million gobs, get a million trigs. And this is lethal, so the opponent is forced to chump block something here. Chump blocks the rider. Goes down to two. All right, I think we're good here. I think we're good. 
They, I don't think there's any possible way to go off from this position. Even if they drop a Baral, they gotta go Baral, Ritual, 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 Manamorphose, and then they could go off, but that's gonna be a little bit difficult. So, my question is, if I have Leyline of Combustion and they Grape Shot me, do they take a million triggers from Leyline or do they take one? I'm gonna keep this because it's got the turn one Gemstone Caverns and I can bolt a dude and then get out a turn two thing. So, let's go Gemstone Caverns and throw away a Castle Embrith. They're not gonna turn one of dudes, so I'm just gonna F6. Yep. Yeah, the ability creates copies, but each of those copies, I know it's the, it's basically a spell, but they're not casting it. So each copy is, is not a cast copy. So like my question was just like, cause Leyline says whenever a spell or ability targets you, and I guess they're technically copies of a spell. So they are both, considered spells all right the opponent's down to four cards left in hand so i think that they're gonna need a little bit of help to go off here and now i have double rabble and there's a ley line all right this feels good let's f6 that goblin get in there got another dude manamorphos mama morphos It's like Flusterstorm. I would say so. Abraids. Alright, well, I do have a backup rabble. Let's do it. Got a creature. Got a bolt. It's a lot of removal. Oh, another rabble. You, if you're gonna keep killing my rabble's opponent, I'm just gonna keep top decking more. Oh, wait, hold on. Turn off all auto yields. I gotta play this land. And now I think I have lethal this turn. And I'm gonna play Leyline of Combustion. And get a bolt. Oh, it's Horbrand. It's definitely over. It's definitely over now. I hope they force bike. They don't. Yeah, it's over. Definitely over. If they have a bolt, they can stay alive. Okay, they're staying alive. They're staying alive. They're down to two cards left, though. Can they do it? Three cards. You got three cards to work with. What you got? I didn't have a chance to play this Ley Line, so sky's the limit right now. You can do whatever. You have... Gifts. They got the gifts. But they have one mana left untapped, and they already played their land for turn, so... With that in mind, I do not want to let them have rituals. So I will not let them have rituals if it's the last thing I do. So ritual and ritual will go in the grave. But then they get metamorphos and grave shot. Oh, that's good. The opponent is smart. So uh, the grave shot would have been so terrible if I had the ley line out. Well, okay, so I'm scared of their last card being passed in flames. If their last card is passed in flames, I'm screwed. If I take away the rituals, they can metamorphose Grave Shot for three. Oh, this is sketchy. Okay, if I take metamorphose and a ritual, then they're not going to have enough to cast the passed in flames. So I. Guess I take Manamorphos and a Ritual.
Yeah, take metamorphos in a ritual. So one ritual is not enough to cast a thing here unless you like yeah there if your last card's passed in flames that one ritual won't allow you to cast it so that's fine and ritual plus grape shot is not enough to kill torbran you can kill the rabble but it's not enough to kill torbran okay just two they're just gonna kill the rabble and pass and now i can get out the ley line and they're forced to chump block here, too. Alright, they're chumping. And now, Leyline says, you can no longer grape shot me, so you're gonna have to find an empty the Warrens win. You're gonna have to find empty the Warrens. Also, at any time, a rider is just lethal, too. He got played by Dunkin' Donuts today. Sounds legit. Tell us about it. Ritual. What this be? Piff. Ooh. So you can ritual, 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 grave shot, but you're gonna take a billion triggers. Even if you bolt Torbran, you're dead. Because Leyline's gonna hit you. If you target me in any way, opponent, you're dying. <laughs> like, there's nothing you can do, I, I don't think. Because all those rituals in a metamorphose maybe will find you and be the Warrens off the top. I think that's your only out here. Yep, they're, they're ritualing, they're ritualing, metamorphosing. Gotta find that empty. Alright, Goblin, that, that allows you to start doing something, but no target. No targets. Can't target me. You're making a short fanfic with Shaku. Love that character. Yeah, the character looks gnarly. Super cool. That's the Shaku deck. Needs some work. It would take me a good month to help you optimize that Shaku deck, Bibbo. When I work in an EDH deck, I, I'm just like on my phone every night for like a month trying to figure it out. And it takes a while to optimize EDH decks. And once you get down to the end of it, it takes like literally a week to make the last few cuts because it takes a lot of thinking about the rest of the deck. Like right now I'm working on a Timna and Krom. And um was thinking of making my Thrasio Security into a Thrasios Vile Smasher. I was thinking of doing that. Okay, opponents echo and truthing, but they're dead. They take a trigger on the stack. So you have to win at instant speed here. <laughs> Cause this is a permanent control and we got there. Opponent explodes to the Leyland of Combustion. I have gained so much respect for that card lately. That card is so underrated. Destroys burn, destroys storm, destroys interaction in general. Got a game here against Lucas Sadra. Lucas Zadra. And we're going to be in the draw. With some Torban 14 Rabble. And Rabble Rabble Rider is interesting, but we don't have any acceleration, so it's kind of slow. But if we do draw anything, we have 11 pieces of ramp and also 6 pieces of removal to draw into. So that's 17 live draws. And that's like a 1 in like 3, 1 in 4 chance maybe. Uh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. It's sketchy, but it could work. Okay, never mind. It can't work. Too slow. Far too slow. Far too slow. All right, we're dying here, guys. We got some perfect emotes for this situation. And watch them find a second land, a second Tron land here of a different kind. I would not count it out. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. And I would guarantee you they're going to find the third one next turn. 
Oh, this was just a turn away. Can trips. All right, show me that corn. Oh, wow, I'm surprised. Ballista on one. Okay. All right, I guess we're going rider or rabble into rabble into rider into rider and seeing if that'll do the darn thing. Let's try it out, see how it does. And hope the opponent doesn't have a Thought Nazir here. Hope they're not Eldrazi Tron. They wouldn't be running the stars though if they were Eldrazi Tron, but they do have. Okay, Ballista. They're just ticking up here. Attacking will take it, and now they can suicide it to kill the rabble, which I think they'll do here. Yep, and they are doing it. But they didn't find the third Tron land. It looks like they ran out of ways to find it, so this is not terrible. Alright, let's go... Do I just go Rider here? If I go Rider, I get in for six, and the next turn I go Rider again. Oh, that might be lethal. Let's just do it. So this is six. And then the next turn I drop a second rider and I hit for six initially, bring him down to seven. Yeah, that's lethal. That's exactly lethal. So if they got no reality smasher. Oh, they just found a Tron land in an Ulamog. Alright, that's game. That's fair. They top decked it. They top decked Tron to when we had lethal on board. They top decked Tron, of course, because that's a thing that happens. Alright, uh, bring in Megasys. And I don't, I don't need Smash to Smithereens here. We're going to cut some Handware Garrisons. They're a little bit slow. And we're going to run it like that. And hope the opponent doesn't top deck Tron the turn it matters. King Makar is a better commander than Shaku IMO. Yeah, King Makar was really popular when it first came out. It was pretty much the mono black commander when it first came out. It was as popular as Yogg is today. Uh, would you like to go first? Yes. Uh, it's pretty slow. But I guess so. If I draw a rabble, I can play it. Double rider is good, and we're just gonna hope they don't find turn three Tron. Maybe I should have just aggressively mold for a Magus. But then again, they could have just ballisted it. Alright, that's a rabble. We're gonna try and see how it does. I would like another ritual effect off the top so I can get out this rider. They didn't turn one that star, so they top decked it. Green source. Okay, I have a feeling they got turn three trunks. Okay, that's, uh, not awful because at least it kills a Karn, but it's still pretty bad. Everything that's not a Magus is a bad top deck. Ooh, they didn't find it. What the heck? What? Goyf and Tron? Okay, I'm gonna bolt that. <laughs> the heck is this? Goyf Tron. I I've now seen it all. I have now seen it all. Okay, I'm gonna Megas here for sure. I could have ridered, but they would still live. Because I would get him for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Oh, that would have been lethal. That would have been lethal if I went rider. But they're scooping it up anyways. Alright, so let's run it right back. Goiftron, man. New meta. This is what's been going on while people have been playing Pioneer. Okay, that's super interesting. So if I get out this Torbrand quickly, double bolt, that's 10 to the dome. I'm gonna keep that and see how that does. So I'm hoping to draw another ritual effect here. That's another ritual effect, so I can get out Torbrand next turn and then double bolt them.
course, the second Tron land, Sylvan Scrying, yep. So Tron's happening next turn. And uh, this Torbrand don't matter anymore because they're just going to Karn it. All right. Well, at least I can get them to take down on Torbrand, allowing me to get this rabble through. But it's still going to be super slow because I'm going to be tempoed out. Yep, exactly. Oh. Oh, it's just a worm coil. <sighs> All right, well. Now I got to go rabble. And get him with the token. And bolt the worm coil. I don't have to bolt that life linking one. Another scrying. Gets the tower. Got eight mana. Just a nugan. Just a nugan. No biggie. It's not logically possible to beat Tron, apparently. In this channel, Marin MTG, you've seen it here first. Tron's unbeatable. We never beat Tron, ever. Nobody does. That's why everybody loves Pioneer now, because there's no Tron. Got a game here against Cosme Fulanito with their Geth avatar. I know that's Geth because I play Geth. I mean, oh wait, Grimgrin. <laughs> I was confused because uh, uh, Pleasant Kenobi was uh, playing geth and edh and chill and that's why i thought i saw it all right um so this is turn one uh rabble which is good i would like to keep that and hope that our ssg doesn't get simians or thought caesar inquisition so let's keep that i'm hoping that somebody on a grim grim avatar is not playing black which is a lot to ask for but i hope they're not playing black because i don't want to get thought caesar right now <laughs> i don't ever want to get thought caesar that's why Pioneer was such a relief, but then, oh wait, no, Thoughtseize is in Theros, so we still got Thoughtseize, but nobody's really playing it. So I'm kind of surprised that Thoughtseize is not seeing a lot of play in Pioneer. And that's a great thing. Clearing your cash didn't help, still inky blackness. Oh man. Dang. All right, well, I'm committing super hard here to do this, this rabble. So if they have a bolt, I would be very sad. Let's play the good art rabble. Please, no bolt. Okay, we're getting in there. Opponent mulliganed. That's good. Oh, they're stalling on our combat step. They have a bolt, don't they? Okay, they don't. They don't. I don't know what to do, Drew. I I'll look I'll look up on Google what what or reasons why my stream might be going completely dark for some people. But it's it's fine on my end and I'm literally doing nothing different than I normally would. I'm gonna check if, like, OBS has updates, because I just updated OBS, like, a month ago. Because that was the last time there was an update, and I keep it up to date. And, uh, can re-enter my stream key, I guess? They, grab toward it, they gravitated towards Stoneblade because it's one of the few decks Stoneforge words in, and people want to play Stoneblade. Okay, so we're going up against Sanity Grinding. Alright, let's go with a second Rabble and see if that can aggro them out. So at least this is not, this is not a hyper-interactive matchup, and that's good for our Rabbles. Get 
get in there for what is this seven eight seven no it's it's eight yeah it's eight so getting there for eight on turn what is this two <laughs> getting in for eight on turn two That's fair. That that sounds like Kogak to me. Ban Rabble Master, dude, Pioneer though. Actually, I think that it's really cool that Pi that Pioneer has Rabble and Legion War Boss. I think that's super awesome. But like I don't think I've seen a deck that's taking advantage of eight Rabble and Pioneer. We're taking advantage of 14 Rabble right now in this deck, but uh Oh, they have duress too. They're going in on the budget, but they also got marsh flats and scalding tarn, so they're definitely not on a budget. But uh, they also have handwork garrison and Kranko in uh, pioneer, so they have sixteen rabbles too. So against sanity grinding, they had a lot of fetches, so Megas of the Moon might be good. They also had those build ruins and stuff, so uh, Megas of the Moon might be able to disrupt them and get them off of actually uh, casting a sanity grinding. Um, Leyline of Combustion makes it so whenever they target us, they take two. And with the, all that mill, they're definitely going to be targeting, a, targeting us a bunch. So I guess I'll bring that in over bolts. Or bone crushers. Bone crushers are a little slow. And then cut a bolt. Uh, uh Smash to Smithereens kills uh, Mesmeric Orb, but that's about it. Like, yeah, that's about it. I'm kind of tempted to try Megus. No, nah. Let's just run it right back. If we lose again and see the sheer amount of non-basics the opponent has, I'll bring Megus in in game three, if we lose. But I'm just going to do the ley lines, because they're going to target us a bunch. Alright. So at least we know that our, our rabbles are not being interacted with. Sunforge all the way through. Yeah, but I think that that the red white um hammer time takes better advantage of stone forge of stone blade. I think that that's like meant for it is the is the hammer time deck. All right, we have a gemstone caverns and a SSG, so that's a turn 1 war boss. And if I draw ritual, it's turn 2 rider. All right, let's keep All right, turn 0 effects. I'm gonna get rid of Bolt here, I think. Uh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, see all the non-basics. Okay, it is- it is insanity grinding. It is insanity grinding. Oh, they take nothing here. Nothing here. Sorry stuff is wacky, Drew. Oh, man. That's not bad. That is not bad. They, uh, fetch shocked as well. So they're already pretty low. Ping him with the boggling. Oh, sweet. That's not bad either. That's kind of what we wanted. Oh, they whiffed, actually. They whiffed. And now we mentor. Alright, things are looking up.
Yeah, it's it's over. It's over. They duress. They saw what was up. They saw what was gonna be their next turn, <laughs> and we got there. Got a game here against Jeans Eight Bit, and we played against Jeans Eight Bit in Pioneer the other day. So, what does Jeans Eight Bit play in Modern? We're gonna find out. This looks like a great hand. We're playing some no. Torbran. And, uh, yeah, let's do turn one gemstone caverns and probably toss away, uh, Simeon's spirit guide. Actually, you know what? No. That don't make a sense. I think we're gonna toss away a fiery islet and just go with a turn one Krenko. Right? Does that make sense? Nah. I think I throw away Simeon's spirit guide. Whatever. Because I want to get up to this rider as well. Inkmoth Nexus, so it could be... Okay, it's Affinity. I was going to say it could be Red White Stone Stone Blade. And the turn one Vault Scourge. Alright, let's get out... Krenko. Start getting Krenko going. Is it modern on a schedule or random? We're playing modern today because it's modern Monday. It's Saturday when we're streaming this, but on YouTube, it's Monday. So we're doing that. And on Wednesday and uh, Friday, videos will be Pioneer. But in stream-wise, that would be Monday and Wednesday would be a Pioneer. We got some good things planned. Man, the opponent had a Galv Blast. Alright, I'm gonna stomp this immediately. Well, I need to draw another Rabble or else I'm doing literal nothing. The opponent's got one card left, now two cards. Just don't have anything nuts like that protection from all colors, dude. I always forget his name. Hello. Okay, last card is... Wow! Last card, Experimental Frenzy. Wow, dude. Classic affinity. This is like affinity from like seven months ago. Abraham Sapien. Thank you for the follow. All right, let's go with... Uh... I guess I don't need this ritual anymore. Actually, you know what? I do need it. I'm getting in for chunks of four. I guess I should have played Bone Crusher there. I forgot that Bone Crusher was on suspend. Mox Opal. Cranial Plating, yeah, it's probably over now. If I don't draw a burn spell off the top, that Vault Scourge with the Cranial Plating is definitely ending us. And a Steel Overseer, too, so I have two things I have to answer. So if I don't draw Torbrand, I'm not pushing nearly enough damage that I need. So I gotta get a Torbrand here. Fennekin? It's not Fennekin, it's Brakesin. <laughs> some people, it's like, it's weird. Some people say Fennekin, some people say it's Delphox. And uh, nobody says the middle one, it's Brakesin. <laughs> it's the middle evolution. Okay, we did get a bolt, and I do have to just bolt this thing immediately. Go attacking. Get him for a bit. Down to 11. Cast the Bone Crusher. Yeah, crazy hand by the Affinity player. It would have been a pretty bad hand, but their last card was Experimental Frenzy. It's a nice mountain you got there, opponent. Urza Saga. And of course, Plating on the Vault Scourge is an 8-8. Eight, eight. One, two, three, that's, what, 12? Not dead, am I? Open at two. Oh. Uh.
I don't think that's enough. You never know, what if our opponent doesn't want to block? What if our opponent don't want to block? Triggers. They take six down to 15, and if they take it, that's six plus five. Oh, they're at four. Man, that's not enough. All right, we hit them for 15, but 15 wasn't enough. On to sideboarding, we got to bring in Smash to Smithereens and Searing Blood. And um, I could bring in Megas of the Moon, but I think it's whatever here. Because they also run Blood Moons in the board, so it doesn't affect them too much. I got to keep all of my burn. I guess I'm cutting Krenko. And we're garrison a rider and two rituals and running it like that i guess you like to play first yes oh man that's so close to being good if it had one more land instead of a second torbrand just had double smash at the ready would have been great i think i got a mole all right i'll keep that because that's a turn one rabble and let's throw away I'm kind of tempted to throw away a war boss and just keep the smash to smithereens. Yeah, I'm just going to go all in on rabble here. So, land... Oh, I could have thrown away the... Actually, no. I needed that. Alright, so turn one rabble into land smash to smithereens. Hopefully that's enough. Because I'm going all in here. All in rabble. This is what we came here to do. Down to 19. Springleaf Drum. Mox Opal. Any more zero drops? No zero drops. We get to hold up Smash to Smithereens. But do I want to... Hold on. Do I want to smash something now? Do I want to smash the Mox now? Or do I want to wait? If I don't smash the Mox, they might be able to drop a protection from all colors guy. But I felt like if they had a zero drop, they would have played it. So I don't think they can. So I'm just going to pass. If they, I feel like they're going to get out a two drop, dude. Like a Ravager, perhaps? Maybe something else? They do have a Ravager, so in this case I have to smash the Springleaf Drum. So they can't use it for mana, because they won't have any creatures on board. Alright, go to combat. Do I want to trade my Rabble off? Probably not. They're gonna take it. Down to seven. Alright, I need like a rider or a Torban off the top. Cranial plating, ouch. Galve Blast. Oh no. Come on, Torbran. Come on, Torbran. Ooh. Backup Rabble? I'll take a backup Rabble. Seems good to me. Alright, now I'm feeling pretty comfortable. Unless they get, like, some lifelink and put cranial plating on it. You've had Jalapenos with spice? With less spice than this deck? See, they did have the Edge Champion, but I don't think that saves them. Oh, they got another Galv Blast. Oh, man, they really living on one here. Oh, I need a Bolt. I have so much burn. I have so much burn. I gotta get a Bolt or a Searing Blood or... I don't know. Oh, it's just another land. Oh, man. All right, well, I'm gonna... I'm gonna put them to one here. I'm gonna put them to one here. They can sack a Mox. Get a counter on the Ravager. Yeah. Dark Darth Tiwu and Co Derek, thank you for the follows. Is that really Tiwu? 
This is Garth Tiwu. That's probably somebody who had a who's been on Twitch for a long time back in the Tiwu days, and just had got a Darth Tiwu name for for the for the memes of Tiwu's chat. I I think, but I don't think that Tiwu's Twitch name is Darth Tiwu. I don't think. But if that is, then hello, nice to meet you. I played against you a couple times on Moda before. I beat you once, you beat me once. Good to see a fellow brewer. And hope you are doing well in life. Fire is it? Come on. Stomp. Give me a stomp or a bolt. Oh, come on. Just one damage. Come on, before they get life linker, before they get enough damage to cranial plating on the... Okay, they sacked their plating. I feel like they're out was Ink Moth Nexus and they sacked their plating. All right, that's cool. Oh, it's Darth too, but Twitch wouldn't let you have that. All right, so it's not Tiwu. Oh, Bibbo's here. What's up, Bibbo? A rider, a rider, a searing blood. Now, searing blood wouldn't do it either. So yeah, basically just rider, bone crusher, or bolt. We're about to die, so gotta make it quick. Wait, what was that for? They don't have enough for lethal. Oh, they're going for the two-shot kill. Okay, they're going for the two-shot kill. So they got us next turn. But if they're sacking their Ravager, that also turns on the potential for Searing Blood. That's three more cards in the deck that is a top deck win here. So one of us is about to win here. Let's find out if our deck hates us or if our deck is just teasing us but actually loves us. Let's find out. Is our deck teasing us but actually loves us or does our deck hate us? Three, two, one, go. Our deck hates us. And that is the game. Got a game here against Dubatair, and we're going to be playing on the... We're going to be on the draw. And I'm going to keep this hand because that's a turn two Krenko. And that's why you ask? Unless the show is insane. Like, if the show is about, um, like, one of my favorite things, like, fireworks or, or, um... Or metal music, or or Pokemon battling, or Fallout slash Skyrim. Actually, no, not that one, because I play Fallout my own way. It's an animated show taking place with musical numbers. Unfortunately, Twitch and YouTube see that word as a bad word, so I can't say it. But um, then I, I would get demonetized, but taking place in musical numbers. I am not one for musical numbers, so that is not for me. I'm not a musical person. I mean, I'm a musical person, but I'm not the musical genre musical person. Not my kind of music. All right, is opponent's dug on one land? Let's bolt one of these gobs. What did Goblin Guide reveal? Desperate Ritual. Alright, I can... I'm one short of Splicing Ritual here. To be playing both things. Alright, um... Guess I'm gonna go Krenko and hope it doesn't get Searing Blooded. Or Searing Blazed, rather. Oh yeah. Best card in Chainer is Sar of Insanity. Yeah, I guess so. It's a it's a nice thing to reanimate early on. 
You can get out trainer early. We got a pyretic ritual on top. The opponent did not hit their land, but they did draw a skewer, unfortunately. Alright, well, we're gonna start trying to race here. So it's Pyretic Ritual. Get out the rider. Get out the hockey stick rider. And let's get in for four. Chunks of four. Can we beat them down with chunks of four? This thing is unfortunately in bolt range, so it's probably dying. But at least we're gonna have the potential to race if they don't have a bolt. And if they do draw land, they can just helix it or Syrian blood it. So I feel like we're super dead in this game, but we're going to give it our best try. Did you ever watch Metalocalypse, Rick and Morty, or Gravity Falls? I've never heard of Gravity Falls. I have never really watched Rick and Morty because um, by the time that show came out, I have already stopped watching TV. But back in the day, yeah, I used to watch a lot of Metalocalypse. Um... I've probably seen like one fourth of the episodes of Metalocalypse, but uh, yeah, that was a cool show because it was like metal based and, and it was really dank. It was a very dank show. It was a very, uh, it, it was a very, very stoner show. And I mean, I'm not a stoner or anything, but it, it was a very stoner show and it was pretty, pretty cool. Got it all on DVD. I used to rock out to some Death Clock back in the day, like, um, I used to, like, listen to some Death Clock here and there, like, even before Metalocalypse became a thing. So it was cool that when, when that show became a thing, I was like, oh, dang, Death Clock made a show. Do you watch Netflix? No, I told you, I don't watch TV, period. I don't watch TV. Lightning bolts on top. All right, well, I'm gonna take it. Because if the opponent goes land, bolt, bolt, I still survive and go to one, so it's fine. What are your hobbies besides magic? I would say, um, I mean, I had to drop a lot of my hobbies um, because I started doing YouTube and doing YouTube takes up like 12 hours of your day. But let's say that, I mean, well, the one thing I actually do when I'm not recording is probably, or not working on YouTube videos is I play video games. Um, I would play like Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat has been one of my big hobbies for a long time, but like Mortal Kombat, but if say rewind to two years ago before starting content, um, I would say, I would tell you my hobbies are playing music, like playing guitar and uh, Pokemon battling. And I I don't know if you would call things I like like a hobby like pyro pyrotechnics fireworks, um, and because I do like I've I've al that's always been one of my favorite things for like the past twenty years, and I've just been like looking at um a lot of fireworks stuff and watching firework content. Right, uh. So I got in Dragon's Claw and Searing Blood and Ley Line of Combustion. And let's cut the hand where Garrison's and the Krenko's and uh, a couple, a few rituals, pyretic rituals. Actually, let's let's keep in some rituals and cut some of this top end. I really like that. Have you tried Outer Worlds? No. It's, uh, I looked at it. People told me to check it out because I'm a total fanatic of Bethesda games and like Fallout and Skyrim. But the thing I like about those is the... The total personalization of it like you can start the game a million times over and play the game completely differently a bunch of times and and it's the aesthetic factor like you can create your character like how they look and choose their armor exactly as you want it and and you know like in outer worlds you're in fps like if i'm gonna play an open world customizable game i want to be able to customize the heck out of my character and see my character in like third person view can't do that in that game it's an fps game all right, let's keep this hand. We can bone crush. We can sh stomp something. We can get out of turn two rabble. Saffron Olive was the first content creator you watched. The first content creator I watched was like probably my friend Alex, um, aka Seems Good Magic. 
Um, other than that, uh, back in the day, like a long time ago, I watched like Rogue Deck Builder, Tudor's Library. Um, I remember when Saffron Olive was new. I remember when he first like came out. I saw a few of his videos like way back before he even used thumbnails. Back when he just used stock thumbnails. <laughs> But yeah, I would say the most long-time content creator I've watched who still does content to this, to this day is Alex from Seems Good Magic. That was my buddy. Opponents stuck on the one-landers, aren't they? Alright, well, since they're stuck on one land, I might want to take this opportunity to race and get out a, the, a rabble here. But at the same time... It's probably smarter to kill one of these, but then again, then again, I might just want to, like, save this for an Eidolon, right? Because they might have an Eidolon when they get to their second land, but if they don't, I could use this ritual next turn to get out Torbrand, and then just start driving Rabbles, and that's probably going to get in for a lot more. And this won't die to a Searing Blood, or Searing Blaze. So you know what? I am just going to stomp one of these. So we'll get out of Torbrand next turn and then just start dropping Rabbles like they're hot. Um, it's a bit more linear in story, but still super customizable character armor and your character shown in every cutscene, so you spend about half an hour on how she looked. Yeah, but like, I, I like to play like Fallout and Skyrim and stuff in third person. I, I The only time I play in first person is when I'm in close quarters, like indoors. But I, for the most part like to play in third person so like because it's one of my favorite ways to play a game is third person like open world that's why i was super hyped for black desert but still have never played it um ssg is here all right you know what? i'm gonna use the ssg here actually because i have dragon's claws in my deck and since i have dragon's claws this ritual can give me a trigger I guess the Simian Spirit Guide could have also, but I definitely want to spend the next couple of turns playing Rabbles. But, you know, more efficient. Because if I drew a, a Dragon's Claw next turn, I go Claw, Ritual, Rabble. And I have just enough mana to do that. And I also got a Bone Crusher to play, so I got lots of stuff to do for a while. Yeah, finally I have Torbrand out. Torbrand is so difficult to get out. He just never wants to get out. Now the opponent can drop an idol on and make it super annoying. If a red source would deal damage to an opponent, so even their own idol on is going to make them take four. So uh, if they dropped an idol on, it would help us. And if they draw an idol on, I would like to draw a ley line because I wouldn't take a trigger. And every time they cast a spell, they would take eight damage. Four from their idol on and four from the ley line. So that would be amazing. All right, do I have enough for double rabble here? I think I'm one short. So I guess let's just drop a rabble naturally. I think it's a little risky to even let Torbrand take any damage because he could just die. So I think I'm just going to swing with the goblin alone. And if the opponent wants to chump with the Swifty, the Taylor, the Taylor Swift Spear, it's going to die. Yo, Grindcore 13, my favorite genre. Grindcore 13, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Yo, let's talk about some Grindcore, man. Grindcore and Slam are the best metal genres, in my opinion. That's Those are the genres that I listen to in metal. Yo, what's up, Dan? Yeah, it's a red source I control. Oh, yeah, a red source you control. They're going to bolt us. That's fine. They're going to bolt us again. Alright, I need the rider. I need the rider really bad for lethal here. Rift bolt. Okay, so we're likely dying next turn. We gotta do this now. 
So I need a land. I need to draw a land here. A land or another ritual or something. Oh, there it is. There it is. That is what we wanted. That's lethal. That is Mac lethal right there. That is absolutely Mac lethal. Unless the opponent bolts this pre-combat. Don't have a bolt. They just used two bolts. You gotta be done. You gotta have no more bolts. Oh, are you serious? You had a third bolt. Now we probably die because of that. Yeah, now we probably lose because of that. Whoop, get in there. Gotta force them to chump. So they have to chump the rabble, and they're gonna take 10. Wait, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, they're gonna take 10. Man, they had triple! They had to baby a triple bolt. So salty. Don Valsey, thank you for the follow. How's it going? Yep, going down to four. Rift Bolt's gonna hit us down to three. Show me the burn spell. I know you got it. Go ahead, end my suffering. I think it's a lot easier to win when you got um, a Dragon's Claw. So I think in the next game, I just gotta mull for a Dragon's Claw. You got two cards to work with here. One of them has to be a burn spell. Let's go ahead and play it already. Reads from Germany. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the opponent did not have a burn spell and those two cards in their hand. And we got there. Sweet. There is justice after all. Got a game here against Char Aznabel. Char Aznable. And we're going to be on the draw with some Torbrand 14 Rabble. And that needs a land, but if it gets a land, that is potentially turn two double Rabble. Or, yeah. So let's keep that. So triple ritual gives us five mana. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, that's a bummer. One short. But still, if I draw a land... Turn to rabble, or yeah. Okay, so it's Soltai self mill. I definitely want to deal with carry and feeder, but not until I see what they're gonna sack. Like if they play a Stitcher supplier, I might want to. Okay, I definitely want to bolt that. They mill Narcamoeba. If they didn't get the nut draw and get double prized amalgam. And I still didn't get a land. Alright. And they did get Grave Crawler, Stitches of Plier. They had another crab. They always have the crabs. They always have the crabs. When do they not have the crabs? Whenever I go up against this deck, they always have the turn one crab. It's it's crazy. I don't know how it's that consistent. It's kind of like how the, the Allosaurus Rider decks always have the Neo Form in hand. Or the Allosaurus Rider in hand. It's like, that's how it always happens. I don't even know if I want to reveal information. Because it's just like, it's over. They're getting back. Prize the Amalgam here. Okay, let, let me let me think about this. Because if I wait to draw a land, I can splice a ritual and then cast a ritual. So if I go land, exile SSG ritual, and then I, then I desperate ritual splicing another ritual, it gives me six mana. And then I can drop two rabbles in the same turn. And that's probably better to like wait for that. Just try to go for the explosive nut draw because I feel like I'm not winning otherwise. But they are getting in for a huge chunk of damage next turn. Six? That's six. All right, I guess I'm just gonna go for some crazy nut draw. So let's discard Hanwar Garrison.
Mills over a creeping chill. That makes it a lot harder. And if they can get back a Venge Vine right here, that would also be a thing. Which they actually can get a Venge Vine here by sacking Gravecrawler. See if they mill over another Venge Vine. Yeah, they're just they're just gonna get back Venge Vine here and I die. Alright. That's the game. We have no graveyard hate in here, so I think I just want Syrian blood to kill the crabs. And uh try to go all out aggro. Megas of the Moon's probably bad. Alright, let's go Searing Blood. Let's cut Franco and a Hanwer Garrison. Try like that. Gotta go for the Torbrand Rider Nut here. Just go damage directly to the face because I feel like we're not gonna attack through them. Would you like to play? Yes. Okay, that's a turn one Rabble, so I'm gonna keep it. Keep it in hope that turn one Rabble's good enough. See if we can beat a turn a, a tier one deck with a turn one rabble. Alright, let's see how this does. Get in for one. And they're not gonna kill us on turn one, so that's good, because Dank Blast won't kill it. And I feel like they don't have like anything else that could kill this, except if they somehow splash red for lightning axe. The Sore Wolf, how's it going? They're gonna mill themselves with Merfolk's secret keeper. And, uh, I guess we're just going to combat and swinging. I got a grave crawler in there. They're gonna trade an Archimiba for a goblin. Yeah. Grave craw. And they just scoop it up. They're not gonna be the turn one rabble. Alright, nice. Let's try that again. Let's run it right back. All right, now we're on the draw though, so it's a lot more difficult. But we can get the turn one gemstone caverns, which we do. We do get the turn one gemstone caverns, so let's keep that and put it into play. I wanna exile probably a war boss. Because I think I want to try to go for the rider in this match. And I want to keep that bolt for a crab. Because screw crab. Show me the crab. Nope. They're just going to mill themselves a bunch. Hello. Bosk113, how's it going? Thank you for the follow. Watch on YouTube all the time. First time seeing you on Twitch. Thanks for coming out here to the stream and seeking for the Marin content. I appreciate you taking that time. All right, let's try to bolt this Lotlith troll. All right, they're going to discard a bunch of creature cards to make it out of bolt range, unfortunately. Unfortunately, they had a double Vengevine and a Grave Crawler, the absolute nut. All right, well, it's war boss and uh, and not attack through. I need them to swing, and I need a top deck of Torbran. So we have to go for this lethal swing here. Uh, I don't know if we're going to beat that, though. They just did Hogak level shenanigans right now. And now they have just a free 0-4 blocker. I have to take this. I don't- I'm not doing math. If it's lethal, then we die. Oh well, but I'm taking it. Alright. Rider. I guess I'm attacking and hoping that they don't have- that they forget to attack or something? I don't know. All right, that is the game. All right. Not going to beat a tier one deck. Got a game here against Mistaken, and we're going to be on the draw with some Torbrand 
14 rabble. And that is a turn two. And we're garrisoned, so let's keep it. And hope our opponent's not on something insanely quick. It looks like they're a standard player who's converted over to modern as of recent times because they got a Golos avatar. And um, being a Golos player, they're a fan of lands, hence the reason that they are playing a uh, Amulet Titan deck. I have a great memory for your past matches. What do you mean? Like, knowing what we're going up against? Because if that's the case, yeah. Because I've been playing Modern for a long time, so I, I tend to know the decks. And there's a Corsair, which is going to be really difficult to fight through, as well as a Primeval Titan they're getting close to as well. Exile SSG. Let's get out of Handware Garrison and pass the turn. What if we put a Singleton Handware Battlements in this deck? That wouldn't have been a bad idea. I should have put a Singleton Handware Battlements. Those gemstone caverns are getting close to suiciding. Ooh, a Torbran. Torbran's not terrible. Although I probably want to just attack, get out of second hand where Garrison, and then play a Torbran. So yeah, let's just attack first. I want to go a little bit wider before I play a Torbran. Does the opponent want to double block? They don't. They just block one of the one ones. All right, let's play another hand where Garrison, and next turn we'll play a Torbran. It goes super wide. How much would this deck cost in paper? Uh, let me check. This deck costs uh, $209 in paper. Well, let me see. Um, a good majority of that comes from the Gemstone Caverns. If you cut the Gemstone Caverns, the deck is suddenly $140 in paper. And if you also cut the Sideboard Magus of the Moons, the deck is suddenly like $120. And honestly, those can be cut. Well, I wouldn't recommend cutting Magus of the Moon. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guides are kind of pricey. So yeah, I would just say Gemstone Caverns... And also, the three fire islets, if you just replace them with mountains, suddenly the deck's like 100 bucks. So if you just take out fiery islets and gemstone caverns and just put in mountains instead, the deck is 100 bucks. So it's pretty budget. All right, the opponent has an Azusa. They can start playing lands and gaining life. All right, time for Torbran. Oh, there's a Rabble, too. Definitely got a threatened lethal, though. Let's get in there with everything. And if they want to block it all, their dudes are exploding. I mean, their Corsair can block one once. Oh yeah, that's your deck list, uh, Abraham Sapien. It is exclamation point deck. All right, opponent goes down to two and loses their Azusa. And they can Titan here, but they don't have an amulet. Their amulet's on the top of their deck though. Actually, they're still a mana short of Titan, so they're dead. Yep, sweet, on to sideboarding. Going to bring in the Magus of the Moons for Shizzle. And Searing Blood hits Azusa and Sakura Tribe Scout and uh, the tokens, the uh, Colony Heart tokens. Colony Garden tokens, but I don't think I need that too badly. I definitely want to leave in Bolt. I guess I'm cutting Bone Crushers and just like a Krenko. Run it like that. It's not bad. I think I'll take it like that. Oh, yeah, there's no there's no space between the exclamation point and deck. And also, um, Pantomime X already put exclamation point deck in the chat. Just scroll up literally two centimeters and you'll see it. All right, that's turn two war boss and a turn three war boss. I'll keep it and hope for a rider.
Oh yeah, maybe they came in late. There you go. Thank you, Pantomime. Pantomony. There's a Krenko. All right, I probably want to get out turn two Krenko instead and just get that going. All right, let's ritual. Krenko and pass. I'm gonna put in the land. It's a cavern on giant. I think you were right when you said the deck needs two more lands. The curve is pretty high for 22 lands. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because we have a lot of three drops. We do have um, nine or 11 total rituals. So maybe it's not so needed. All right, they got us a comma on top that they're pretty far from. They got Corsair. Another war boss. All right, well, I'll give them the opportunity to trade off for the Krenko. Make two gobs. If they want to trade here, that's okay. Nope, they're just going to eat a gob. All right. So they can... Prime time here if they got the land plus it. But they don't have the amulet, and I'm never too scared of prime time unless there's an amulet, so we're not gonna die. We haven't taken any self pain. But what they could do is attack with Corsair and prompt us to just take two, and then that will put us in range of prime time. Because prime time attacks for 18. And that looks like they do have it. Obstinate Bayloth, that's pretty good. Obstinate Bayloth is pretty good, but we're still gonna try to go wide around it. They can go ahead and eat Krenko. Ooh, that's another war boss. All right, let's go with another war boss. All right, I'm just gonna keep on relentlessly swinging. Put counters on the gobs. Franco's gonna make three gobs. They're probably gonna block Krenko and block war boss. Yep. I still got plenty of war bosses. Wow, they're at 20? How are they at 20? <laughs> they only gain like five life, one off Corsair and two off Opsin Veil. How are they at 20? What's up, Sergio Sequera? Yo, Dracovo, are you still there? They got a Gruel Turf on top, but they're not playing it. Okay, they do play it. They might want to just pick the Gruel Turf back up so they can drop it out with Sakura Tribe Scout and gain another life. Yep, and that is what they're doing. We got a three drop to play. Azusa. Ooh, that's a goodie. That's a goodie. Ooh. And with all of these, blocks of 2-2 two, two, and two of the 1-1s. One, ones. Yep, they're going to take 5 down to 17. You got a forest on top. So at least they can still play a titan and gain a bunch of life. But once I draw a land and get our two rabbles or two war bosses in the same turn, we're just going so wide. And they don't have a titan. But they got another obstinate Bailoff on top, which is annoying. Oh, SSG. Oh, that's great. Warboss, Warboss. Warboss Tron, the playset of Warboss. We got out the playset of Warboss.
All right, just attack with all the one ones. They can eat three of them, but then there's still six coming in. Oh, well, five coming in. At this point, they should just trade off their Sakura Tribe Scouts. Yeah, they are. All right. That makes sense. They're going to leave one Sakura Tribe Scout just for tech, for tech purposes. They got a Radiant Fountain on top. That's pretty good. Radiant Fountain plus another option at Bayloth is a great way to stabilize. And they're back up to 20 again. Actually, I don't know if that gets a trigger. Oh, they had an Abrade. And they have another Abrade on top. Oh, man. I need the Rider quick. I need the Rider super fast right now. So I can just Alpha. Yeah, we're playing some Torbrand Boglins right now. Come on, Rider. That is not a Rider. All right, well. Now they can eat four dudes, so I guess I just hard cast SSG and just pass and hope to top deck a rider. Yep, they're going to eat them. Rider Torbrand is what we need. Yeah, the Torb, the Torpor Orb. How is the Saturday? Saturday is a good day. A good day. Saturday is another work day for me, though, personally. Oh, they have Zakama. Dang. Now they just gain a billion life and blast everything. All right, I'm going to concede. <sighs> They're zakama us. Can't believe we lost that. Well, Krenko did some serious work there. Maybe I want to bring Krenko back in over a Hanward Garrison. Uh, Smash to Smithereens hits, um, hits the amulet. That's not a bad idea. I guess I'll bring in a couple of those. Let's just cut another hand where Garrison in a ritual. I don't like that. Monocolor decks have a soft place in your heart for sure. Dude, that's mostly Commander for me. I play mostly monocolor decks in Commander. I have a Oketra as my mono white. Uh, I'm rebuilding Captain Lannery Storm as my mono red. I have two mono greens. One is Patron of the Arachi. One is uh, Selvala, um, Heart of the Wilds. I have one mono blue, which is Luzu and Scholar General, which is one of my favorite decks. My mono black is Geth, uh, Lord of the Vault. And then my mono brown is Hope of Gearper. All right, that's a turn two, Megas of the Moon. And... Uh, if I draw another land, I drop a backup Megas of the Moon, and then if I draw another land, I got Torbran, and I can bolt a Corsair when I have out Torbran. So I guess I'm going to keep that. It makes sense to keep that. And if they have the turn one Sakura Tribe Scout, I can bolt it. All right, that makes sense. So let's try it. Oh, Once Upon a Timmy. What you getting? Slayer Stronghold? That lets you get out of turn one amulet? Dang, that's a bummer. Okay, another ritual is not awful. I'm kind of tempted to just get out Torbran here. That doesn't sound bad to me, because then that turns on Bolt for a Corsair. Does it really hurt to give them colored mana this turn? I mean, that, I guess that does kind of hurt because I'm going to be giving them like... Because they have the amulet now, so if they have like a, a growth chamber... If they have a growth chamber, they can just like... Get out... Um, what? A three drop here, like an Azusa, and then go off? 
So I guess... I guess it makes sense to go Megus. Yeah. If I draw a land, I can go Torbrand. But I, honestly, I'd want to play a backup Megus because we know they have a Braids. Two mana. All right, they're holding up a braid. It looks like they're holding up a braid. Okay, I can go Torbrand here. Let's go attacking. See if they want to braid this. They're not going to. There's so much upside for them if they do have an abraid. I'm... Dang, I might just be forced to play a second Magus here. Yeah, let's be, let's be extra safe and just play a backup Magus. Dr. Slumpy, thank you for the follow. Oh, they didn't have any abrade. All right, this is good. This is good. Start chunking in for four. Four per turn. They're on a three turn clock. Can you find a forest? Oh, I should not say that because I always speak things to life. You don't really understand why Desperate Ritual has Splice into Arcane for the same cost? Oh, it's because if you have a, if you have, say you have four lands and you splice it, you go up to six mana, then you cast the other one, you got seven now instead of having five. So it, it nets you um, two extra mana when you splice it. All right, nice. Exile SSG. Torbran. Go attacking for eight. And now Bolt's lethal. <laughs> or it's one away from lethal, but still, I think this should do it. I think we got there against Degenerate Amulet Titan. Oh man. Go swinging. Yay! 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 We got there. Sweet. I like beating Amulet Titan. Feels like a good deck to beat. Before we get into the sped up rounds of the video, I would like to remind you that if you were considering purchasing today's deck, or any cards really, it would be awesome if you purchased through our decklist link down below. That is our tcgplayer.com affiliate link, and when you purchase through that link, it really helps support the channel. And with that being said, let's resume the video. Hope you enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. Today we're speeding up the next three games. We speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. Also, we have to keep it under two hours long. And if you wanted to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. This first matchup, we're going up against a very interesting Mardu deck. They have Eile Eternal Pilgrim, they had Thoughtseize K Command, Fulminator Mage. Admittedly, the opponent is getting a little bit flooded, but I'm just super interested to see where their deck is going at this point. We're just going super wide with like triple rabbles, and I even followed the Handwork Garrison at the end there, Assault in the Wound. And we end up getting there, and I bring in Layla into Combustion because it seems like they're a heavily interactive deck, and anytime they try to target our stuff, they're going to take two damage. They have Eilie again. This time they don't have red mana. They special all black white stuff. They have Cabal. They got Burnt and Forge Tenor for that pro red sideboard. They got Liliana to make a sack creatures. I'm very intrigued and interested to see what their deck is trying to do. They got Lingering Souls, so I'm guessing at this point that it's just typical Mardu control, and they're trying to discard, like, smithing helixes and, like, Lingering Souls and, you know, just get value and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure what Eilie is for. Maybe they have some kind of, like, they had Fulminator Mage in the main board, so I'm thinking that maybe there's some kind of Unearth Reanimator trying to reanimate cheap stuff like that, and Eilie is just their sack outlet or whatever. Uh, I'm guessing that's the case, but uh, we end up going wide enough right here with Leyland of Combustion and killing the Murderous Knight and getting in with our um, Tin Street Kingpin or whatever and our Rider and there's just nothing they can do and we got there, but it'd be really interesting to see people build this kind of deck. Just the Mardu, discard your own cards, make your opponent discard cards with Lily and discard Smithing Helixes. We didn't see Smithing Helix, but I assume that it was in there and I think that'd be a really cool card for the deck. So if you're watching and you don't have that in there, you should try it out. Anyways, we got there, and we're moving on to the next game, and we're going up against Jund. Now, as I said in the Pioneer video, when we were like 10-0 or whatever, and then we lost the Boggles, I even said that the Brew Killers in Magic the Gathering, be it in Pioneer or Modern, is going to be Boggles, Tron, and Jund. And uh, what do you know, earlier in this video, we lost to Tron 
because it's a brew killer and we're going up against Jund and we're getting wrecked because Jund is known to be a brew killer. Like, what am I supposed to do? You try to play a brew and then your opponent rips apart your hand with Thoughtseize, Inquisition, and Liliana and then they have infinite removal for whatever brew stuff you're trying to do because they have catch-all removal with Assassin's Trophy, Abrupt Decay, Maelstrom Pulse, then they got like cheap removal like Bolt Push and stuff like that. So you can never really get anything going. So Jund is just going to destroy your brews no matter what it is. Tron is going to destroy your brews no matter what it is. Boggles it just doesn't care about what anyone does. So... You know, things like that. So we lost to Jund. Uh, we got pretty wrecked. And uh, there's nothing we can do about that. Like, we kept the hand with one payoff the unturned one. They Inquisitioned it. Like, what am I supposed to do? So uh, we go into the last sped up game of the video. And the opponent is Inquisitioning us again. Hoping it's not Jund. Uh, they do play an Overgrown Tomb here. But they did it off a of Windswept Heath. So at that point, I could tell that it's not uh, Jund. I thought it was Black Green the Rock after they fetched the Overgrown Tomb. But then they have the Godless Shrine. So we know it's Absan. So it could just be a mid-range Rhino deck. Now, I'm trying to just stabilize here because they're getting so much control. It's kind of acting like Jund at this point. And they get a Sword of Fire and Ice, and that's just a nail in the coffin. I'm not going to beat that, especially when they're at 19 and I have no things at all. Uh, so going on to the next game, I bring in Leyline of Combustion because they do have a lot of control and whatnot. And I get it in my opener, so it's now on the battlefield, and any time they try to target my stuff, they're going to take two damage. Now, in this opening hand, I had my choice between getting a turn one Rabble or a turn one Magus, and I mulligan, so I had to bottom one of the two. And I kept the Magus and it paid off, locked down their lands, and there's nothing they can really do or cast, and we just ran them over with Magus Beats plus... Leyline making this so that they can't really target our stuff and then bone crusher giant going on to the next game I get the opening hand ley line again, but it's a very slow hand the inquisition away my legion war boss And I don't know why that was my worst thing and for some reason they play a bob into a stomp that they knew about and um I have double rabble here and then Torbrand and then these rabble tokens are starting to get in and it gets to the point where whenever they target me, since I have a ley line, they would die. Even with the sword, if they target anything with sword, they would die. They would suicide themselves if they swung with the sword creature. So we just locked them under ley line completely. So we got the prison lock with ley line. That's super awesome. It's a very good card. Play it, people. So we ended up with eight total wins and the deck did pretty great. Although there's a lot of ways to build this deck and you can try so many different things. You can try a lot more of the punishment strategy. Leyline of Combustion has proved itself yet again. This card is really amazing. Um, Torbrand is super good with the rider when it's out there. Uh, although I only got that off once and I hit the opponent for 15, but it wasn't lethal because they had, it was against Affinity and they had that, um, the cranial plating on the vault scourge and it able to gain up to like 21 life or something and i was able to hit them for like 15 but it wasn't enough so um i really wish that would happen more often but i found myself in a lot of situations where i just have like an opening hand that has like two lands and like two rituals and i get out a turn two or a turn one or turn two rabble and then a turn two another rabble um but then i just find myself with no lands left to get up to four mana so that's the problem and if you're going to build this deck i would say go up to 24 lands if you're going to play up um two play sets of four drops i would say definitely go 24 lands because sometimes you just they're stuck there and you can't get to them but if you do that make sure to be more canopy lands because if you're going to play 24 lands you will get flooded sometimes so you want to be able to crack them and and use them for their abilities and whatnot so Got to make sure they're useful in some sort of way. So maybe if you're going to do that, you should have like sideboard hazards so that you have a use for all those lands in the late game. Anyways, uh, I like the whole package of like all the rabbles. Renko was pretty impressive. I feel like Krenko is a super underrated card, but the problem is it's so it's just a squishy one too. When you play it, it just dies super easy. But if you can get a swing with it in, it feels like really good. And then if you get a second swing in, it's great. Um, Handware Garrison is a super underrated card, but maybe I should have definitely put a Singleton Handware Battlements in here um, because then I'd be able to make Handware the Writhing Township. And there was a lot of opportunities for that if we had a Handware Battlements in the deck. And even like without it, like even if uh, we didn't have the Handware Garrison, Handware Battlements would be fine. For one mana, it can give a creature haste. So in the late game, you just top deck like a Rabble or a Bone Crusher or whatever that's on the suspend. You just play it, give it haste, and then just like get in there. So it's not bad. If you're going to build this deck, I'd recommend adding one of those. Um, 
yeah, the rest of the deck was fine. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new for the spices, the gameplay every other day. Let me know a deck you want to see in the comments down below. And like I said, we're going to start doing Modern Monday and then Pioneer we're going to do on the other days, Wednesday and Friday. And we're going to try that for a little bit and see how it does and see what works out better. And we may change things around as time goes by to see what works out better. Um, let me know your thoughts on that as well. Uh, go check out the social media links down below. Go check out the Twitch is also linked in the description if you want to catch one of these live streams. We stream every Saturday, Monday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to see some more Tor brand gameplay, our buddy Fluffy Wolf 2 on Twitch and on YouTube uh, plays this deck quite a bit. So if you like Tor brand and you want to see some more gameplay, go and check him out. Thank you to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the chat. And we're going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.